Before I make any long build videos, I wanted to spend some time talking about glues and glue techniques uh, for things I've learned over the years for this event. Now this, this video is a little different. There's no script. I'm just going to narrate as I go, so hopefully I don't ramble too long and make too many mistakes. So first, as you can see in front of me, there are a lot of different types of glues. They all have their own purpose. Um, things like spray adhesives for spraying large areas. Uh, this is like a construction adhesive. I've used it for gluing uh, 3D components together. Epoxy. Here's, here's a standard wood glue. You know, why don't we use this? It says wood, wood glue right in the name. Uh, this is uh, original Gorilla Glue. Uh, this has some interesting properties that uh, it expands when it uh, dries. But as you probably know, the magic glue for us is uh, cyanoacrylate um, or super glue. And it can come in different viscosities. Everything from like a gel, like this is a, kind of a paste, uh, thick gel all the way down to really thin, that's almost as thin as water. Um, my preference is uh, 50 CPS, which is a, a unit of viscosity. You'll see as I use it, it's, it's thicker than water, but it's thinner than what you'd find called uh, medium uh, CA glue. Okay, let's move these glues out of the way. Okay, so why do we use CA? It's, um, it's, it's really strong for what we need to do. Um, the biggest benefit is it sets almost instantly. Um, I remember the first time I used CA glue with balsa wood and it was pretty incredible. It's almost like uh, putting Lego together. It, it uh, sets that fast in maybe three or four seconds. Of course, there's some downsides too, right? So it doesn't fill gaps. So you really need to apply this gluing two flat surfaces together. Um, the, the thicker CAs can fill gaps, but the stuff I like to use is, um, is not made for that. Um, yeah, so the other thing with using this type of glue <clears throat> is, especially with balsa wood, it's almost like gluing two sponges together. Uh, it, it absorbs quickly, uh, so you, you really need to develop a good technique to, to glue this. Uh, there's, there's a balance. You, you need to be both quick and patient at the same time, and, and I'll demonstrate uh, how that works. Okay. Let's just give an example here. Say we want it to, very simply, just glue, glue a piece on here. It doesn't, I'll just break this off. Say we wanted to glue that on there. The way I like to work with this glue, this is just wax paper. Put this, put a little dab of glue on here. You don't need a whole lot. Always keep the cap on it. Uh, leaving this open to air is what uh, ruins it. Okay, and then I use these push pins. And what you can do is you dip this in, in your puddle here. And if you just tip it up, it will form a drop at the end of the pin. Okay, you can then transfer that to where you want to glue. Okay, one, one more quick thing here. If at all possible, you, I find it best to apply the glue to the piece that is you're gluing to, not the piece you uh, are gluing, uh, you know, uh, from, right? So I'm gluing this onto here. This is sturdy and flat. I'm gonna put the glue on here and, and then apply you know, press this on afterwards. 
and I'll, and I'll give a little more uh, elaborate example in a minute. So we get our drop, we can apply the drop, and then we can put it on there and hold it. Now this is a, this is a very important piece here, right? So depending on what type of wood you're gluing determines how long you should really hold this piece. And the, what I've found is that the more dense the material, the longer you need to hold it. Now because this is just two pieces of balsa wood, relatively, uh, you know, uh, not dense balsa wood, generally seven or eight seconds is fine to get a very good uh, joint there. So now this is set, right? So this is, this is already pretty strong and strong enough to work with. Now it won't be fully cured for 24 hours or so but you can, you can work with this piece uh, w just that quickly, which is, uh, which is pretty, pretty incredible. Now, for, for other examples, um, say for instance, well, I can, I can use this boomy lever from uh, last year. This, this device has everything from balsa wood to balsa wood, like all these cross joints are balsa. And then there's basswood. So the, the tension pieces are basswood. These pieces are bass. Um, so we've got bass to balsa. And then these joints, of course, are bass to bass. And then the, the most critical joint of all up here is the, um, I can actually demonstrate that. This is the piece that hooked on to the boomy hook, right? So the, lo the loading block went here. And this joint, uh, whoever's built these knows this. This is, this is one of the most difficult pieces of this uh, event was getting a good joint there. And, and we came up with a pretty, pretty, pretty elegant solution uh, very simple to do, but this joint had to be done uh, in a very, very special way to make sure it was uh, was done correctly. So, back to what I was saying for how long you need to hold it. So, for if you're gluing basswood to balsa, I like to hold it for maybe 10 to 15 seconds or so, and then and then bass to bass is even longer, so maybe 20 to 30 seconds. And then finally, for this for this critical piece up here, we would not only uh, hold it for 20 seconds tightly, uh, we would then we would then use a clamp and then clamp it for several minutes, and then uh, and then reinforce the top of this uh, with some with some more uh, CA. And that that seemed to work pretty well for us. So this then also shows that CA glue is strong enough to handle just about anything that I've seen for any of these devices. Because this, if I remember the computation, there's over 100 pounds of force uh, on this top piece when there's a 15 kilogram load here. So CA glue is certainly uh, strong enough to do that. And, uh, you know, I forgot to mention the the real downsides to something like this wood glue is it takes a long time to set, hours and hours, and you really need to clamp everything. So it's really intended for gluing two by fours or, or real woodworking where you can clamp it or use uh, screws or nails to hold it together. So, and it's, it's heavy, so you don't, you don't really wanna use this for our application. Okay, so back to, oh, one more thing with this, this joint. It was so important that we would, we would build this tension piece separately. Uh, the, the base here would take a long time to build, I mean, maybe an hour or so, maybe even more, depending on who was doing it. But this top piece was fairly quick, uh, but it was, it was a high point of failure. So we wanted to test it ahead of time. So we actually 
would do something like this. Let's see if I can get that in camera. This would be the the piece that would be up here that we're testing, and then we 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 also created a a, a similar connection down here, and then we would put this on a, a weight rig to apply. Uh, let's see if I can show it. Well, I'll look up a picture and show it here. Uh, so that should show the weight being applied. So we, we could preload this to maybe 50 or 60 pounds to make sure this joint was not going to fail uh, before we'd put it on the, uh, the, the you know the, the rest of the boomy, so we wouldn't um, wouldn't waste all the time and material building the base only to have a bad joint up here um, ruin it all. Yeah, so another thing to keep an eye out for is when you are, uh, so this glue is very strong and if you create the joints properly, the, the joints will basically never fail or the glue joint will, will never fail. That's not to say you won't get failure at your joint, but the what will typically happen is the glue joint will hold, but it will rip away from the balsa and it will shear off. Um, and I actually have an example of that. So this this was a cross member uh, of one of my recent bridges. Hopefully I can zoom in on that <clears throat> in post. You can see the uh, there's a there's a piece here of of glue and it's got parts of the top surface of the wood on it. So what happened is the glue joint is still fully intact, but the wood itself got sheared off. So that means you have to match up what your expected loads are going to be with what you're gluing. Two, not just the strength of the piece that you're expecting to hold the load. So that's just uh, another aspect of the design. But know that the glue itself should be plenty strong to hold uh, everything we're dealing with here. Okay, so next I kind of wanted to show a technique that uh, say say you had say you were oops, say your design required many, many glue joints like this. This, you know, I don't know, 100, 100 glue joints here. It's, it's very important to not, uh, well, put it this way. You, you wanna know exactly what you're doing and where you're placing the glue before you start gluing. So what I like to do is, uh, so we had a design for that base, for instance, here's a, here's a beat up version of it. So we, we, we would design, you know, we'd go through different iterations. We would have a little 3D jig, we could put the base on there. Um, but as part of this process, say we were gonna create X's throughout all of these things. We would then mark on the device itself, you know, you can just put little, this is a, a fine tip Sharpie. Um, and, and you can just say, put, let's do it there and there. Okay, so now we have, hopefully that shows up. We got four, four glue joints for where we're going to do it. Also like, to, uh, cutting all the pieces ahead of time, even for, um, even for all, you know, keeping track of all the X's in a complex design like that. But we would have, uh, you know, you, later you can be more accurate, but it can also be a little longer because we're gonna, we can sand this off after the fact, but for this, demonstration, we'll just need uh, two pieces. Right? So now we've got our pieces cut. Make sure you know where they're gonna go. 
here and here, right? So now here's where practice and technique come into play. So you want to apply the glue onto the, the places you're going to uh, join as quickly as you can, but not sloppily, but <laughs> quickly, right? So, you know, we can put one drop here and one drop here, and then immediately apply your piece. And here's where you have to be patient and hold this for seven or eight seconds. So th this is probably the number one issue I saw with especially middle school kids or anybody who's just starting out. <clears throat> they wouldn't be patient with every single one of these joints and that's when you can run into trouble. Because you can, because it sets, these joints set in three or four seconds. They can be, you can't tell just by looking whether it's a strong joint or not. And then we can do the other side. As quickly as possible. And we hold this for a while. Okay. And now, of course, it's also very important to get glue in between those. So if you're using the technique with the pin, it's typically very easy to just uh, slip it under there with glue on it, and there you go. And that, that works really well. Okay, so now, so it's also important for the best joints to get it right on the first time meaning uh, you only get one chance at applying glue to both pieces of this material that are, are, are fresh, okay? Uh, so I, I'll, I'll see if I can demonstrate one of the problems that uh, happens. So let's say we're creating uh, another piece here. Say we're gonna create it this way. Alright. Something like this. And you know we could put our location in there. This doesn't matter too much. So th there's a couple ways that you run into trouble. One is if you apply the glue if people get distracted or they wait too long and the glue seeps in and, and by the time they put the piece on, it doesn't, it doesn't, um, doesn't make a good joint. Or, you know, if, if they hold it but not long enough or, you know, you, 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 you mess around with it, you don't get a good fit and it gets spread around and now that doesn't make a great joint, right? So what happens is a, a thin film of glue will build up on there and it doesn't, and it starts to harden and it doesn't allow this piece to stick. All right, so now uh, we're kind of in that scenario now. So there's a couple ways you can fix this problem. Um, usually, so now this is this will behave a lot like extremely dense wood, meaning you can, you know, you can add a little more glue. I would typically cut a brand new piece here to, to replace this, but for now we can just use this. And now you you need to hold this for like 30 seconds or more to make this uh, joint stick. And that's another uh, problem I've seen with a lot of people just starting out. They, they, won't, they won't know why that some joints are not sticking well. Uh, and it's usually because they've had a failed attempt at, at, um, 
at a joint. Now another another thing that will happen, it's happening to me here, right? So especially when you have excess glue, your finger will start to stick to it. So when that happens, you really want to roll your finger off instead of just pulling it up or it will pop the, uh, pop the joint. Now what you get is glue on your finger and that's where the sanding block becomes your best friend and you can uh, sand off the glue. So this guy is pretty decent. And of course another way that this happens even with good technique is, you know, especially with more delicate material or, or, you know, things happen, if this breaks, right? If somebody breaks this or it gets broken and you need to replace this piece. So typically, you know, you can, you can pull this off and you can already see that it, it took a little piece of the wood off of it with it. Now, usually I will want to, to um, especially if this is dried or whatever, you'll want to sand this a bit to get a, a, a roughed up surface before re-gluing a new piece. Yeah, so now we can, we can uh, you know, cut our new piece. But the, the real trick is to uh, try and never have that happen. Because whenever you make some of these mistakes, you're typically always adding more weight by adding excess glue that wouldn't have been there if, you, if it happened correctly the first time. So that's a real challenge, and that's really only what you learn with the experience. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> yeah, this is not the uh, greatest thing in the world, but there's our piece. Let's see, what else do I want to show? Oh, for Worst case scenarios, if you can't get something to stick or there's no patience to, uh, to hold it for a long time, you can use accelerator directly on the joint. Um, so that's something like this. This is, uh, comes in a lot of different forms. Um, some people like to spray it, but I, I like to use um, a little pipette here and just Directly put a drop or so on the joint. Uh, the joints. And that will essentially cure it to 100% or nearly 100% um, strength immediately. So this is, it's very useful if something breaks uh, and you need to you need to have it at full strength uh, quickly. Um, that's basically the only option. Um, or if you're, or if you're really trying to reinforce something, you can, you can put glue on there and, and uh, put some accelerator on there, and it will not let it seep in as much, and it will, uh, it will glue it on there nicely. Oh yeah, one more thing. Um, so as you, as you do more and more uh, gluing applications. The pins will get, uh, they will collect up dried up glue. And um, you might have noticed some of these pins are, have black residue on them. So the, what I found the easiest way to clean these is to just burn it. And it's kind of fun, students love it. Um, so this is a pin I, previously used uh, that has, has uh, a bunch of glue on there. And typically it will just bubble. Of course, all caveats apply here. Do this safely and 
don't touch the hot end. Uh, there we go. So now it's 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 ready to use again once it cools off. Yeah, so if you have any questions about gluing or gluing techniques, uh, put them in the comments and I'll see if I can answer them or uh, address them in another video. Thanks for watching.